Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. For those of you who don't know me already, I am a registered dietitian nutritionist. And here on my channel, we talk about positive body image, having a healthy relationship with food, different psychology tricks to eating a healthier diet, and just overall nutrition tips. So if that's something that interests you, then hit that subscribe button down below and get some notifications for when I have future videos. So today, if you can tell by the red lip, I have a little bit of a holiday theme going on. We are just about into the holiday season. For those of you in the United States, we had Thanksgiving coming up next week and we also have Christmas coming up in the near future. So a lot of different things uh, going on soon. What comes with holidays, of course, the family, the friends, gift exchanges, being thankful for things. Unfortunately, what also comes with it is is a lot of mindless eating. And that's something we're gonna talk about today, is how to be mindful and eat intuitively during the holiday. Now, by all means, we are all human and I don't expect any of you to be totally perfect during the holidays. That's just the nature of the beast. But I do have some tips to be your absolute healthiest as possible because that's what we aim for, right? It's all about balance. So these are some tips that I threw together and I hope they help you. Comment below what your favorite one is and I can't wait to hear your guys' feedback in the comments below. So let's get straight to it. So how can mindfulness and intuitive eating help us in our well-being during the holidays? It can help us be more in tune with our hunger cues, help us really enjoy and savor the moment. And the more that we appreciate the foods that we are eating, the less we feel that we have to have portion wise. It's not that we have to restrict necessarily. It's just that we want to pay as much attention as possible in the moment. So we listen to our body's cues and we're not overfeeding ourselves more than we actually need. It does not take a psychic to see lots of food in your future, so let's navigate how to work on that this holiday. So as mentioned a little bit before, mindfulness is an active state of awareness in the present moment. And then in mindfulness, you're kind of observing what's around you, observing your own thoughts. And the key to it is that you do not have judgment on those thoughts, feeling like oh, I'm not being positive enough for the holiday. I'm not being good. I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing that wrong. That is not being non-judgmental. Of course, that's judging your own self for your thoughts and your actions. And we want to avoid that. Of course, it's human to do that sometimes, but as much as possible, just being aware and kind of letting go of all those thoughts, all those judgments and letting them pass through. Essentially, we are shooting for leading a life in a meaningful way and not letting our distractions, our ruminating thoughts, or even our phones get in the way of enjoying every moment. Oftentimes intuitive eating and mindful eating get kind of mixed up and used interchangeably, but they're a little bit different. Mindful eating is more or less paying attention, savoring the moment, paying attention to your senses, using your senses while you're eating. So that's what that is. It's a more so objective and intuitive eating is letting go of the diet mentality and listening to your true hunger and fullness cues and not letting diet culture and other things impact how you eat. You're not following rules. You're actually listening and being intuitive to what your body says that you need. So if you need a candy bar, you eat a candy bar. If you need an orange, you eat an orange. So that's essentially what intuitive eating is. Linking back with mindfulness, we're not labeling foods as good or bad. We're just, they're food. That's it. And so yes, we want to have a healthy diet, but it's more so we want to focus on having a positive relationship with food and not tainting it with diet culture rules that we see everywhere. I see them everywhere and it's really, they're really sneaky sometimes. So, you know, it's easy even as a dietitian to sometimes get wrapped up in kind of hidden diet culture rules. We can get into that on a different video, but for now let's get into how to be mindful and intuitive um, while eating during the holidays. The first tip is to take breaks while you're eating. It can be really really easy to scarf down your meal and not really even pay attention, especially at like something like Thanksgiving or talking to family 
we're enjoying their company, but we're just shoveling food down. We want to mindfully fill our plate with adequate portions and have a mixture of the foods that we truly want. And we also want to enjoy them. There's no point in having that food if we're not actually feeling our senses, smelling the food, tasting the food, and just slowing down. So a few tips that you can use to actually slow yourself down and take breaks is to put your fork down in between bites. You can also reach for your glass of water and take sips in between every couple bites just to make sure that you're not, again, scarfing it down really, really fast. And also I've heard some people like using their non-dominant hand so they're not as fast. Because typically when you use the dominant hand, like I'm right-handed, I can use the utensil much faster than if I use my left hand. Uh, for some people that's awkward and not something that I personally use, but I have heard it used from other people. So let me know if you're gonna try this out in the comment section below. So the second tip that I have for you is to keep a visual cue of what you just ate. So what I mean by that is don't have someone else take your dish to the sink or don't take it yourself to the sink keep it in front of you for just a few extra minutes. Or if you have something like candy or chocolate that has a wrapper on it, keep those around you for just a few extra minutes. It doesn't mean that you have to keep them all night or have to get a giant pile of trash near you. It just means keep them five to 10 extra minutes. And this is because we can kind of not trigger our brains necessarily, but we see it visually and that helps remind us of what we ate. So maybe we weren't as mindful as we could have been during eating that food, but we see physically that we had that food by the evidence that we leave. In other words, our plates or our wrappers. This is something that has helped me and something that I do practice personally when I eat, because sometimes I have a habit of watching TV and eating food at the same time, which I know is not perfect uh, mindfulness habit, but occasionally I do do it. And I like to keep my plate with me for just a little bit longer to solidify that I did just have a meal and so I'm not reaching for something mindlessly afterwards. Tip number three is to use your senses. You want to smell your food, look at your food, hear maybe the crunches of the bite that you just took, touch the food if it's applicable, and of course taste your food. So this goes with like kind of slowing down. Oftentimes we eat on autopilot and we're not even taking into account half of the senses that we have. And it's really a shame because when we use our senses, we really get a full enjoyment of food. It's amazing all the tastes and smells, aromas that we can enjoy from food when we actually pay attention to it. So put your phone away, really put your full attention into your food whenever possible because you'll be surprised how good something tastes when you actually are mindful of it. Note that you cannot touch everything like soup you don't want to stick your finger in it but if you can smell it if you can enjoy it if you can really take in all that aroma then you're gonna enjoy that soup that much more i'm not sure why i'm doing this tip number four is to let go of your inner food critic it can be super easy to be really harsh on ourselves during the holidays. We're eating foods that we're not used to eating all year round. We're exposed to all these different temptations and it's normal and human to enjoy treats during the holidays or maybe foods that are a little bit richer than usual. It's human and it's normal. What doesn't help us is when we're adding on to that little guilt with more guilt. We're, we're saying that we're bad people, we're associating us going overboard on eating or us making a poor food decision. We're correlating that with being a bad person. What you eat does not define who you are. What you eat is not good or bad and it doesn't make you a good or bad person it doesn't define you. Your measure of self-worth is not correlated with the types of foods you eat, what you weigh, what you look like, nothing. When you start to hear that inner voice that's just telling you evil thoughts, mean thoughts, self-esteem lowering thoughts, notice them and tell them that they can leave whenever they feel like it. Don't try to push them out forcefully. Don't try to attack them or layer on even more judgment for judging yourself. I do that sometimes, but don't do that. Try to recognize that maybe your inner critiques come from a good place. They come from a place that maybe you want to be eating healthier. You want to 
exercise more, etc., etc. Inner criticisms come from a good place because they try to make us better people. They try to kind of get us off of our butts and get us reaching the goals that we want to achieve. But when they become detrimental to our self-esteem, then it's counterproductive. It doesn't get us anywhere because we are so hard on ourselves that we don't believe that we can achieve the things that we want to achieve. Getting off on a little bit of a psychological tangent here, but my point is that criticizing yourself is not going to help the situation. If you overate or if you weren't being mindful, accept the fact that that happened and just move on and be mindful at the next meal. It's not a big deal. It's life. It happens. We're imperfect human beings. Tip number five is a really important goal that I wanted to share with you guys, and that is communicate your needs and your health goals with your family prior to whatever event you have. That was a long title to a goal, but it's an important one. Communicate with your family because the more that you communicate ahead of time of what healthy eating or mindful eating means to you, the less you're gonna get a lot of attacks or judgment or teasing during your holiday dinner. A lot of the individuals that I personally work with have trouble with this because once they head to a holiday, their family is kind of judging them or kind of reflecting their own insecurities about how they eat onto the person trying to eat a healthier diet or they're pressuring them to eat more than they really truly want to eat. The best thing you can do is try to set yourself up for as much success as possible by telling them ahead of time, listen, these are my goals. This is what I'm trying to do. I want to eat mindfully. I want to eat a balance of foods. You can even offer to bring a healthy side dish like Brussels sprouts or sweet potatoes or whole grain rolls or even a dessert. Whatever you want to bring, you can bring it to your Thanksgiving so you feel more comfortable with some of the foods offered. Again, if you want to eat only what's offered at your family meal and it's not the most nutritionally dense foods in the world, that's okay. Um, but just Explaining at a time that you don't want to feel pressured by family to do X or Y can help you from feeling the need to defend yourself. You want to focus on spending time with your family, not defending your health goals or whatever during that time. Just a little extra bonus tip. If you are interested in learning more about mindful eating and intuitive eating, there are a few books that I will list below that you might enjoy. I will link them all below, but they include intuitive eating, eating mindfully, mindless eating, and an intuitive eating workbook. These are all books that I have personally read and I'm currently working on the intuitive eating workbook to improve my personal relationship with food. So I definitely encourage you guys to work on it. Maybe we can work on it together and do a few video series on some of the workbook activities. Let me know if you're interested in that in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and joining me today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this and also hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video today. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!